Here we go again. Now that the House Oversight Committee's impeachment case against President Biden is falling apart after a central allegation is proven to be made up, James Comer, Jim Jordan, and others leading the effort appear to be shifting strategies again. In the hours after an FBI informant's claims about the president taking bribes blew up, Comer and Jordan tried to downplay it by saying that the guy's testimony wasn't really that important. At the end of the day, he wasn't an important part of this investigation because I didn't even know who he was. All I knew was there was a 1023 that alleged bribery. But that was hard to believe given just how much some leading Republicans hyped this guy's story and his now debunked allegations that Joe and Hunter Biden both shook down a Ukrainian energy firm for $5 million each. The FBI had repeatedly warned that the claims were totally unverified. The informants now been charged criminally for allegedly making it all up, and the first response was, ah, it's not a big part of the case anyway. But that strategy appeared to flop, and it was on to plan B, or really more like plan C or D or E, attack law enforcement. Go after the prosecutor, David Weiss, a Republican. Go after FBI Director Christopher Wray, also a Republican. Go after rank-and-file FBI agents and even other everyday law enforcement officers. It's a sad attempt to deflect from what has so far been a bungled effort. The law enforcement bashing started over the weekend when Comer and Jordan sat down with Fox News anchor Maria Bartiromo. Now, keep her name in mind as we go along because she's far from a bystander here. On Bartiromo's show Sunday, Congressman Jordan cast some bizarre suspicion on special counsel David Weiss, suggesting a sinister motive for why the special counsel ignored the now debunked claims made by the newly indicted FBI informant Alexander Smirnoff on what is known as a 1023 form. David Weiss had this information, the 1023, back in 2020. What did he do for the last three years? What did he do for the last three and a half years? Why didn't he look into it before? But it seems strange to me because it looks like David Weiss didn't do a darn thing with this until after the plea deal falls apart last July. He, he didn't do anything with it because it was buried in an FBI file until the GOP leaders highlighted it and insisted it become public for the world to see and scrutinize. So the theory here is what? That David Weiss is doing President Biden's bidding by indicting this informant? In other words, Joe Biden is using his pull to corrupt Weiss to get this informant indicted, but Joe Biden doesn't have enough pull to get his own son unindicted? The same David Weiss who was appointed by Donald Trump, the same David Weiss who's already charged Hunter Biden with a truckload of serious crimes that could put him away for decades, the same David Weiss who indicted Hunter Biden for lying about drug use on a gun form, a charge which has never, ever been brought before in a case involving a single gun where the person had no criminal record, there was no other crime, and the gun wasn't used in a crime? Tony Bobulinski's story hasn't, and the whistleblower story hasn't changed, but David Weiss, the White House, Joe Biden, Jim Biden, their story has changed multiple times. David Weiss has shown himself to be nothing but an even-handed prosecutor, and sadly these days that gets you called out by the extremists on both sides. Remember, Hunter Biden's lawyers are also accusing Weiss of being improperly influenced by politics, but they say he's a right-wing influenced hack. But see, the smears of law enforcement are just getting started. This morning on, yes, Maria Bartiromo's show on Fox Business, Chairman Comer launched an attack on the FBI claiming Director Christopher Wray gave them the runaround as it related to the informant and that overall he now considers the bureau to be untrustworthy. All we knew, Jim Jordan and I, was that Christopher Ray said that this informant was one of their most trusted, highest paid in the Bureau. They had successfully used this informant to prosecute criminals in the past, and he had been with the Bureau over a decade. Everything that, that I've had uh, to do with the FBI has been very suspicious throughout this investigation. The trust level that I have with the FBI is zero, Maria. Again, lifelong Republican Christopher Wray and the rest of the FBI never gave this allegation any credence. Both the Trump and Biden DOJs didn't take this allegation seriously because they didn't believe it. There's no change in their position. That apparently doesn't matter. Wray just isn't delivering the goods. So Wray and the FBI are now the enemy in Jordan and Comer's minds. 
And with the House Republican leaders having set the tone, others have gone even further in their attacks on law enforcement. This morning, a New York Post columnist waged an assault on everyday law enforcement officers. Where else but on Maria Bartiromo's show, the place you go, apparently, when you're looking to land cheap shots on law enforcement. This whole um, indictment is very peculiar if you look at it closely. I think if he isn't Epstein in jail, uh, if he isn't uh, coerced to have a plea deal and keep his mouth shut, um, if his lawyers are allowed to mount a defence in court, I think it'll be a very different story than the one that we're seeing in the indictment. And it's very curious that they've thrown this valuable 13-year, highly paid informant under the bus and sent a chill on every other confidential informant for the FBI. I can't imagine that the on-the-ground FBI people, the few of them who actually are fighting crime, are happy about that. The, the few who are actually fighting crime. In a matter of 30 seconds, she suggested federal prosecutors may improperly coerce this discredited informant. She suggested corrections officers may try to Epstein him, meaning kill him, and worst of all, accused most of the FBI's rank and file of neglecting their sworn duties. And Maria Bartiromo encourages all of this dangerous nonsense. Comer says he has zero trust in the FBI. I mean, that, that has to be an incredible statement and have repercussions for America going forward. I mean, is this, is this law enforcement agency, the leadership there, just all political and, and, and have forgotten the essence of the agency? Quick note about Bartiromo. It's a little bit inside baseball, but she has the title of anchor at Fox News. The network has always been vocal about how their opinion hosts like Sean Hannity and Jesse Waters are so different from their news anchors like Brett Baer and Martha McCallum. Let's be clear, Baer and McCallum do credible, serious journalism. But Fox News absurdly puts Maria Bartiromo in the group with the Bears and the McCallums, which means the network's news division should have to answer for this anti-law enforcement stuff she and her guests are peddling. But Maria Bartiromo is just one part of this larger, coordinated, disgraceful attack on law enforcement. It's a ham-fisted effort to muddy the waters, keep the public from dwelling on the fact that the investigation just took a serious and perhaps fatal blow. Chairman Comer and Congressman Jordan have led a totally unfounded smear campaign against law enforcement leaders. And worse yet, the everyday men and women who serve and protect us all. David Weiss doesn't deserve this. Christopher Wray doesn't deserve this. And most of all, the hard-working men and women of the FBI and other law enforcement agencies don't deserve anything like this. But this is more than just political smack talk, right? This is suggesting law enforcement is just corrupt. That used to be the purview of the far left, who I have regularly called out when they unjustifiably attack law enforcement. But now the far right taking the mantle. You can disagree with an indictment or a case. You can criticize law enforcement, of course, when they deserve it. But when you suggest the prosecutors and the investigators are corrupt, you better be able to back it up with something. And here they aren't close to being able to do that. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your cable provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.